this is Mr. Charles Brown. Today we're going to be achieving this effect inside Photoshop using our Photoshop action Neon Art Image Effect. So today I'll be showing you how we got this result using the action and here is the original photograph so what you will do in the action is when you open your image inside Photoshop you will now brush on the subject area and then action will now achieve this result for you it is that simple and here are some examples and let's see other samples that we have and here is the original image the subject and we have the final result so you can use singular colorizer or you can use multiple colorizer I'm going to show you all that in this tutorial And here is another example, original image, you paint on your model and you have this result. This kind of artwork usually take days and hours of work to get done, but with this action you can get it done in 5 minutes. Here is the final result again. Original image, subject, and here are some examples. And yes, this action also uh, contains this light effect and this glass effect as well. And this light effect was generated using your image. The very image you're going to use will be the one that this action will use to generate this light effect and also use that to generate this glass. That means if you use different images, you're going to get different results. And, and as I said before, you can achieve the result also in a singular color. And here are more examples. Original image, subject, area, and we achieve this result. So all these light effects was achieved as I said before using the image and we also included some um, smudge effects for the background you can see here And also this glass achieved using the image as well. And we have this one here. And here is the original photograph 
painted subject area and we have this result so this light effect you see at the background is also included the final result Okay, let's go to the next image. So the smaller your image size is the bigger the neon particle get. So if your image, um, let's say you're using something like 2700 pixels wide, you're going to get something like this one here. And if for instance, you're using something higher, let's say 3700, pixel wide you're going to get something like that and when you look closely you will see that the sizes are different so here is the original image painted subject area and we have this result here Okay, this one here, original image, painted subject area, and we have these results. If you look very closely, you will see all these dispersed particles. So each time you play the action, you're going to get a whole different result. Yes, you're going to get a whole different neon particle result each time you play the action. And also in the action I included a sub action for modifying the outline. That means even when the action is done, you can still modify the size of the outline and each time you modify the size of the outline this action is going to generate a whole different particles for the edge we have this one here and yes this glow effect you see at the back is also included it's like this one you see here so uh, for different images you're going to get a whole different result and this is the original image here subject area and you have this result and you can also control the contrast This one is more lighted and this one is heavy on the contrast and another thing is you can combine this action with our neon photographic image effect so that means when you run this action this particular one now this neon art and you get this final result you're seeing you can also bring it into a different document and then create a whole different effect using our neon photography so this is the final result we got using our neon neon art the one you're going to see me teach you how to use it now and you're going to paint on the subject area and play the action and you will get this result so this is how our neon photography looks like on its own. 
So it's like you want to create glow in the dark kind of effect, you know, which costs a lot to buy um, the light effects and other things that you need to get that done. With the Action Neon Photography, you can achieve that result. Original image painted area, and then you have the flow for the neon particles, or should I say um, some glow particle effect, and you will get this result here. And yes, we also included um, a kind of light effect for the background if you have this action already, the neon photography. And you're going to achieve this photorealistic result. So if you don't have this action yet, go and get it. You're going to be very happy. So you can combine these two actions, this one and that one, to achieve this particular result. So let us begin. And this tutorial is it is only for the extended version. So your initial download on Envato is the premium version, which is a kind of for starters. So when you download that, you don't need to use it yet. Just paste the extended user ID that we gave you on the comment section of this item, and we will send this extended version immediately to you so you will not get this result you're going to see now or you are seeing now um, using the premium version you can only get this result when you use the extended version that we will send to you I'm going to close all these windows now and when you get the extended version it should look like this one and when you go to this folder you're going to find the action the brush and the pattern simply open any of the folder double click on it it will open inside photoshop so make sure that you load these three add-ons now let's get back to photoshop to load the action again you can go to window actions click on this tab go to load actions and locate where you saved the action file and load it and you will find as usual all the sub actions I love to include for all my actions it makes it a lot easier for you and for me then to load the brush and the path and go to edit presets Preset Manager, Load, Load the Brushes, go back there, click Patterns, load that as well, and you find the two patterns here. Click Done, and you're ready to go. Open your image inside Photoshop. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using a high quality photo of 3160 pixels and now the fun part begins go to neon art and play the action a stop box is going to pop up with instruction for you to paint on the subject area the reason for this is to remove the background so you can use the already selected brush to paint on the subject area Another quick way to get this done is to click on the base image, select any of the selection tools. I'm going to use quick selection tool this time and you can make a selection of your subject. And do not worry if you ever select anything. All you have to do is hold down your Alt or Option key and drag back 
to subtract from the selection. Okay, zoom in closely and so if you over select you can subtract that and let us refine that a bit. Let's go here and refine that as well and you can always lower the size by pressing the the bracket keys the left bracket to lower to decrease and the right bra bracket to increase the size of the selection tool. So now you are good to go you can you can now go to to model and then you can now fill it. But before we do that, I would like to have a clean edge. I do not recommend to use feather. No. I will tell you what you can do. You can go to select. So if you're using CS5 downwards, you're going to find refine edge. But inside Photoshop CC, you will find select and mask. And here you can already see how it will look on the background. So I don't want that too much of the shadow of the uh, glow at the edge. So I'm going to bring that down and I'm going to increase the contrast and I'm good to go. I click OK. Go to model layer. You can always press Alt or Option Backspace to fill. Or you can go to edit, fill, and you can choose. So I'm going to use foreground color and now fill it. And you can press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now that's perfect. We're now going to play the action. So go back to the action and click play to proceed and render the final result. That is all. Action will now do the rest for you. So sit back and relax as the action renders. Perfect. Action has now finished rendering. We will now close this tab here. Now let's go to the folder comprising element and here you're going to find a bunch of layers all grouped together that make up for this final effect inside Photoshop. So to close or to collapse all the groups, hold down Alt or Option key. Y comprising elements folder is selected. Click on this down arrow and open it again. You're going to find all the groups collapsed. Now that's great. So here is the original image and this is the final result. And with this sub action, we are going to do a lot of magic. You don't need to be stressed out on, no, on trying to customize the final result. These sub actions will get that done for you. So in this 
these layers now that are color coded. So I will tell you about it and then we can dive into the sub actions. This one here, vector art, you should not delete that and you should not keep it open. So this is where the outline is generated. So keep it that way so if in the future you still want to go back and modify the outline, make it smaller, make it larger, or include more details, you can still do that. And imagine in less than five minutes, you were able to achieve this effect here. Now let's go to the main background. Here you're going to find that glow effect that you saw in some of the pictures. This is where it is, so we're going to talk about that later on, how to use it. And this one here for particle disperse. Here you can include more particles at the outside, or you can make use of this one that is designed to travel outside the subject area. And you can also, you have the right and you have the left. And this one we have the dots. So if you look closely, you're going to see all these dots here. I will just make only that visible and you will find the dots here. So if you want, you can use them, include them, or you can keep it hidden. There are also more outside here, which you can select both and you can actually move them and be creative. You can do that as well. So we have the dots and here we have the glass. So this glass, as I said before, was generated using the image. This very image here is the result of this glass. That means you're going to get a different result when you use another image. And also, we also generated this glow also from this image here. So that means you're going to also get a whole different result when you use another image. So that is it for all this color coded now. So I'm going to show you how to use the sub action to do a lot of cool stuff. Now the first one you're going to see here, properties, is the vector outline. The one that I told you about. With this sub action, you can modify this vector outline. You can see how smooth that is. And this outline can be enlarged to any size. It is a vector. So if we want to modify the outline again, let's say we want to add more details or we want to lessen the outline, you can do that. When you go to this sub action here, when you play that, this panel is going to pop up and you can now make the adjustment. So if I want to have more details, all I have to do is to increase the detail value and I can also increase the darkness. So in this, let's say that I want to really bring it down, all the way down and I click OK. This action will automatically do everything for you, generate again a whole new outline and a whole new dispersed neon particle. So you can see now we got a different result and let's just do a snap shot for this one and this is the original or the default um, outline we got and this one is the one we just got now. So if you want to restore it back to the default, you can play that action again. Just click OK. And this action will take care of it and we have it back. 
And now let's compare the dispersed particle. Let's just take a snapshot, go back here, and you can see we're getting something totally different at the edge. So if we uh, lessen that a bit, let's go to strokes. You can see another snapshot, original, and you can see that it is different from the original to what we got. Let me play the action again. It is amazing. Now let's get to the other sub actions. This one is for the shadow depth. You see this thing here? This area, this shadow area. So you can control that from the shadow depth. You can actually level it there, you can actually remove it and now show everything the way it should be. Or you can include some depth to your subject. So here I'm going to decrease that a bit. So you can do that here. So you can see that using this product is more like you're using a, a complete plugin that you have everything inside it for you. Makes it easier for you to go back and forth and change things the way you want it to be. Now we have the particles colors. So in this action, you're going to find single color, colorizer, and you have the multiple or the multi-colorizer. So uh, if you click that and click this tab here, you can click the randomize and you're going to get different color effect. So you can keep clicking that and keep looking to find the exact effect you are looking for. When you find it, click OK. And action will now do the rest. Everything is good to go. Now let's go to singular. Here you find, let's say, um, I should call it two colors, but mostly the focus here is on the blue color. So that's why it is single colorizer. And here you can change that very color to any color that you like. And when you're satisfied, click OK. So if you want to go back to the multi-colorizer, you can do that and press OK. Now we're going to the outline color. So here you can actually change the color of this major outline. So this one will enable you to change the color. This one will display the, the already existing preset. So let's say I want to to lower down this black color and bring out a little bit of neon particle in the front. I'll click this one and I'm going to get that result here. And if I want it to be thick, I'll click the two. And also, if I want to display the color that I that I choose when I play this one, I will now play this two to display those colors. So if I want it a little bit lighter, then I'll play the one. If I want the versatile color to be much stronger, I'll play this number two, and I can have that. And if I want to change this color I can do that by playing the color change and from here I can choose any color that I like so you can also go back and use the black and you can also go and use this really selected color so uh, for instance now we're here and if you want to um, add the depth like this one that the black have this black here and you can go to adjust 
depth when you play that you're going to get that result again so let's get back to this one here and now I go into the highlights so here in the highlights we can bring it down or we can really bring it up so if we go to level 1 you're going to get this result go to level 2 bring it up 3 4 5 and 6 so we can do all that here so if you want it very very clean you can go with the 5 so for this tutorial I'm going to use 2 I like it a bit dark so that too and here you can actually apply some contrast to it so you can enhance the contrast by clicking contrast one two or three so if you click one we have that when we click two it thickens and also three or we can actually remove or lower down the contrast to have this result here and here we can apply the glow all you have to do is click show glow when you click that you now get the option to change the color of the glow you can click randomize and you can decide how you want it to look so when you are satisfied with the result click OK and click OK again and you're going to find a second option to modify or to change the color of the second glow you can do that as well change the color as you like when you are satisfied click OK and you are done now I'm going to show you something else when you go to the glow you're going to find three folders this is the two that will change the colors so one this is the second one and you have also this third one here so you can move any of this folder around you can move it any place any area you want in your image and you can also duplicate any of this folder to have many more glow effect so let's say I want to move this one around I can click that and press Control or command T and I will now move it to any position that I like so when you find that position then you can place it there and press OK and if you want to hide or if you want to to remove any part of the glow all you have to do is click on this folder click on the layer mask select a brush and you can use any of our brush you can use this soft one make sure that black is your foreground color you can change that by clicking this arrow or you can press X and you can actually remove any part of the globe that you don't need or you can actually do it on any of these folder by adding a layer mask and then place it there now let's get back to the sub action and you can also hide the glow you can hide that or you can leave it active now let's get to glass you can show the glass show the glass you can also 
go to the glass folder and move it around by pressing Ctrl or Command T and you can move that around resize it in any way that you like and you can also hide it another beautiful thing is you can also actually change this neon pattern you can change it from vertical to horizontal this time around it is horizontal and I want it vertical and I can also do that now it adds a whole different creativity to the final result so you can go back and forth in any way that you like and here we have the strokes so at default the stroke is set to semi less you can actually increase that so that you can have more dispersed particles at the edge to do that just play either high you will find many more generated or you can lower that down remove the one at the edge a bit go to medium go to the default one or you can go to less so you have something this clean so so much flexibility you can get let's get back to this one and now let's go to details so at default it is set to high but you can actually bring that down so medium is going to take it a notch down so you have less of the outline when we click that you can see that it's reduced the outline this is the high you can see that it's outlined there and when you click medium it's no longer there and we can also go down to semi less and we can even bring it all the way down that you get to see only the neon and this is very creative it's more like a hand painting when you have that kind of result and let's go back to high and then the last but not the least is the inversion so in some images you're going to find um, a lot of brightness on the shadow area so this one we don't have much shadow but you can see how it's going to make some changes and brighten up all the shadow areas and this function only when the glow is active so that's where you can appreciate it the more if, it's, if it is not active what you will see is mostly the brightness or the brightening of the shadow area so let's click that and you can see it brightened the entire canvas when you go to hype when you go to hyper and you're going to find this beautiful invert effect and you can also paint on it so when you play that action a brush is already selected for you and the layer mask is already active so if your foreground color is white make sure you set it to black by just pressing S or pressing D and then press X to make the black the foreground color and here you can paint on the area that you want to remove that effect and if you want to remove it entirely you can press neutral and it is done so as you can see 
these sub actions are very very useful and does save time so instead of going in and trying to make modifications by yourself the sub actions will get that done for you now I'm going to show you things about the main background here you can also change the colors you can really go to super bright colors okay and you can change to any color that you like from there and we can activate the texture energy you can combine both you can use one and you can add colorizer to it so when you activate that double click and go here and then you can randomize and you can choose the color that you find suitable for your artwork so keep clicking it until you are satisfied with the result so when you are click OK OK and then leave it that way this time I'm going to hide it I just want to see a little bit of that over there and another thing is you can move this very layer around the same way control or command T and you can position and it will react differently on different light settings so here you can move it to any position that you like so uh, I'm going to to bring that a bit down here now click OK so that is done and you can go also and add more particle dispersion you can activate this this folder here and when you go in you're going to find two layers you can if you don't want it to show in the in the front you can hide that you can or you can actually disable the layer mask so that you have more of that in the front or you can enable layer mask and another thing you can do you can add left dispersion or right and you have two folders so you can choose any of the one that you prefer and you can of course move it around also the one here and you can do the same on that area okay I've showed you what the dot do the function of these dots what these dots do and I've shown you the glass I've shown you the glow and I've told you about this vector art and now you are good to go to enjoy this product and this is the original photograph painted subject area and you have this amazing beautiful result here you don't need to spend hours and days of construction trying to achieve this very effect this action we do that for you and also remember your initial download from graphic reaver is the premium version once you get that please paste your extended user id which we give you when you sign up in the link below it is one time so just paste that on the comment section so that we know it is you and then we will send this extended version to you and you can download it and enjoy this product and if you have any question please feel free to ask you can contact us from graphic river or you can also email us from our web page from our customer support page you are going to find our knowledge base in that knowledge base you will find 
answers to questions pertaining to Photoshop products. There you're going to find the FAQ and if you don't find the answer that you're looking for, you can message us anytime that you want. And thank you for watching this video tutorial. Check out my items on Graphic River. Check out also some videos here if you have any question on how to use that product. And thank you. You take care.